Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Now recently, I've been doing a lot of uh, learning Node, and uh, recently I actually created a couple full stack applications using Express. So now what I'm trying to do is learn another framework in the Node environment or the Node uh, ecosystem called Koa.js. Now why am I gonna learn Koa? Koa is created by the same uh, creators as Express. Um, and there are some minor differences. I mean, the reason why they didn't just make it like another version of Express is just because it's different enough that if you were using Express, you pretty much would have to rewrite your code to deal with some of the, the new conventions. But otherwise, they're very similar in a lot of ways and both very minimalist frameworks. And just to kind of give you a little background on why that matters is that um, when you have different frameworks, you have different frameworks of different sizes. You have some robust frameworks. This is like a, like a Python Django where basically all the routing, the templating, uh, handling the server, all this stuff is kind of built in in a nice package that kind of all works together. So you don't have to necessarily worry about how it assembles or how it works together. It just kind of works and you just have to do this stuff to make your website. This provides the benefit that you can get development done faster, depending on what you're doing, but also has the downside of, you know, certain customizations or certain tools you may want to use may just not be usable in that framework or may require more work than it's worth. Um, so it's much easier to always just kind of work within the tool set that that, frame, that robust framework gives you. Um, this could also be Aurelia for, uh, no, not Aurelia, but Adonis for Node.js um, and other frameworks like that, or Laravel for PHP. Then there's more minimalist frameworks like Express and Koa for Node or uh, Flask for Python. And these frameworks basically offer you some, some of the basic sort of tools you need to start put, piecing together an application and let you decide things like what the templating engine is. Um, you know, they might allow you to use different routers. There's also different pieces you can add on to it, but you kind of create your own environment based on what works for you. So this depends on the project, depends on what you need, but they're, you know, very heavy duty frameworks and very minimalist free frameworks depending on your needs. I do think it's a good thing to learn a minimalist framework. It gives you a deeper appreciation for how everything is connected. So when you use a more robust frameworks, you can just better understand how it's all put together. So either way, to get started, you're gonna need a few things. And that's what this first video is about, getting all the pieces you need, getting your environment set up, so that way you have your whole project ready as we build it out over the next several videos. Over the next several videos, we're actually gonna create the project, code it out, set up a database, deploy it on Heroku. So by the end of this, you'll actually have a full stack application. We're gonna build the blog. Um, that you can go out and uh, use. You can go use to be your blog and you can go show it off to people say, hey, look what I did. But the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download Node. So when you go to nodejs.org, you can either download the long-term support version, which means you don't have to worry about updates and whatnot in the sense that they're gonna support this version for a long time. So you don't have to necessarily change to a whole new version but you're not going to get every little new thing that gets added as Node and all these mini releases in, in media. If you really want all the latest features, then you get the current version. But every time they release a new version, they don't support the last current version. So they're not going to increase, release patches and whatnot. So in that case, you need to make sure you keep upgrading to the newest version every so many months, so many, usually every so many months. So it just depends on how proactive you think you're going to be about upgrading. Um, and you can download your the version of Node that you need. Okay, and that'll just make Node work on your computer. Get that done. Next, you're gonna want Bash, okay? Generally, you always wanna get used to Bash because uh, Mac computers and Linux computers by default use Bash as their command line. Windows has its own command line, but um, you can have a Bash command line by downloading this software by going to gitforwindows.org and downloading git bash. So that way, it's sort of, you're working in a sort of uniform setting and you need something to make your code in so that's going to be visual studio code or there's many other ones there's sublime there's atom most of the features are fairly similar so if you work once you've worked in one quite a bit you'll feel pretty comfortable switching between them i generally have all three installed on my computers because for some for certain things i just feel more comfortable one versus the other but visual studio code is pretty awesome so you can go to code.visualstudio.com to download Visual Studio Code. So first things first, download those three pieces of software. 
Now, once you have those three pieces of software in installed, we have to go out there and create our project. So you would open up the folder where you're gonna have your project in. Okay. I'm gonna have it. Over here, projects, COA apps. So I just have a blank folder where I want to have many folders with many different applications I want to make. I'm going to open up Git Bash here. So I can just click right click here and be like, Git Bash is open up here. Okay, and it opens up a new instance of Git Bash. Cool. Okay. Now I don't want to, I want this to be a folder where I have all my COA applications. So I'm going to want to make a new folder. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you guys some of the basic um, bash commands. Okay, so what I want to do is make a folder. So I'm going to make dir, I mean make a directory. Um, or I could make a directory, but I'm not actually going to because, no, no, I do need to make a directory. So I'm going to say make dir first COA Okay, there, the app is made. If I'm not sure if the app is made, if, if the folder was made, I'll hit LS and that'll list all the stuff in that folder. So I see there my folder has been created. Nice. And now I want to actually go into that folder. So I'm going to type in CD, I mean change directory, first co app. I can just type in the first couple letters and hit tab and it'll fill it in the rest for me. So long as there's like not many other things with the same first couple letters, you can just hit tab and it'll just complete the name. When I hit enter there, I'm now in that folder, and you can tell what your working directory is because you'll see it highlighted right there. Cool. So now that we're here, what happens is that when you install Node on your computer, the way you interact with Node is by using commands that start with npm or npx. Okay. Um, for the most part, we're going to be working with mainly npm. So once you're in the folder where you want your project, you want to do npm init. What this does, it creates the basic files you need to have a node project, which is really your package JSON, um, yeah, your package JSON folder. npm init. And so it'll ask you a bunch of questions. Well, it configures your file. Okay. So, and it's going to have a bunch of defaults. So if you just hit enter, it'll just go with the default. And what's in parentheses is the default. So I'm just going to go with that. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. I'm not going to put any description. Now, entry point is like the, the, the file that is going to sort of kickstart your project. So the, the idea is that someone can read your package.json, which is what this is constructing, and pretty much know the ins and outs of your project so they can figure out what everything else is doing. So your entry point is the file that when it's run, makes everything work together. Okay, because the way Node works, it opens up that initial file, looks through information, and looks on whether it refers to other files and then just keeps looking for references to other files and runs everything. Okay, but it needs a starting spot. So index.js is fine. Uh, test commands, we'll be able to create sort of command scripts later on. Uh, Git repository, so if you have a particular Git repository that you're, you're uploading to, um, you can write it there. Keywords, if, you know, if you're gonna upload this to the NPM directory, so you can actually create packages and upload it to the NPM uh, directory and people can search and use them. There are a lot of NPM packages and I will show you about that in a second. Your author, so that way people know that you made it. Uh, any kind of license, like whether it's like for public use or limited use. And then I'll show you what the resulting object is. Okay, so this is what my package JSON will look like at the moment. So right now I don't really have any scripts. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, author, okay, me, that's pretty much all there. Okay, so is this okay? Yes. So now if I hit LS, so now we see that my package.json is in the folder, which means I'm kind of ready to start this node project. But now I need my index.js folders file. So how do I create that file? I'm going to type in touch dot, no, not touch dot, touch, which means create a new file. So whenever you touch a file, it means new. And I'm going to make my index.js file. That'll create the file, just to check. There it is. So we see index.js and my package JSON. Cool. Okay. Now we're going to install stuff slowly. I'm not going to install every package we're going to use right away. So two packages I do want to install sooner than later is npm 
And what you do is you type in npm i, i for install, node mon. Node mon is the package. So basically npm means, hey, this is an npm command. npm stands for node package manager. So whenever you need different tools from node to use, you type, you interact through npm and you download it through npm. So npm saying, hey, this is an npm command. I means I want to install something. Node mon is the package I want to install. So when I hit that, it's going to begin to install node mon. And while it does that, let me explain to you what node mon is. So node mon, what it's going to do, the sounds of Brooklyn. OK, but node mon, what it does, as we get into the project, we're going to create a server that's going to run. The thing is, every time we change our files, we edit something, we'll have to restart our server in order to see the changes. With NodeMon, what it does is that every time we change our files, it'll automatically restart the server for us. Once NodeMon is installed, you'll notice that now there's a Node Modules folder in your directory. So anytime you install anything from NPM, it's going to be in that Node Modules folder. And you generally just don't want to touch that folder. OK, if you ever need to uninstall an application, you would just type in npm uninstall and then type in the name of the package and it'll take it out. Um, and also as you do that, what's going to happen is that everything you install gets listed in your package.json folder. I mean your pa package.json file as a dependency. So in the future, you don't even have to, if you want to send somebody your project, a copy of your project, you don't even have to include the .modules folder. Okay, usually when you put it online for someone to download, you don't include the new .modules folder. So what they do is they would just type in npmi, and since you didn't specify a package, what it does, it looks for a package.json folder, which has a list of dependencies, and then downloads all of them. So that's why you want to make sure that package.json folder has a list of all your dependencies. So that way someone can just hit npmi, and it just installs everything for them. Um, but that's... That. So we have NodeMon. The other thing we need is going to be COA. So we're going to do npm i COA. Okay, and again, COA is just the, the framework that we're going to be using in order to create our project. So once you have everything installed, what you want to do is open up this folder in your editor. In this case, I'm going to be using VS Code. So what you do is you just type in dot which means the current folder and then code and then generally if you have any of the other editors it might be like dot atom if you're using atom it might be i forget what it is for sublime but there's always something like that where you can open up that folder in uh, the particular editor so dot code okay so it's going to open it up So you can see it's working. It's doing its thing. I think my computer is being a tad bit slow on the uptake. Also, another thing to keep in mind is that Node does, on Windows, install like a special version of the command line that's worked with Node. So you'll see here Node.js command prompt. Not a bad thing to, to, to pin to your taskbar if you're using Node in Windows. It does work a little bit faster than working in Git Bash. This is a, a side point. But I just want to make sure we went over some of those bash commands just because bash is such a used thing if you're on Linux or Mac or whatnot. So eventually Visual Studio Code will open up. And I do have one that's already open, just not with the folder. So I can just reopen it. You can, so if you're just doing it manually from Windows uh, Visual Studio Code or from Sublime or from Atom, you can just go open folder instead. So instead of bringing it up from the command line, you just bring up the folder, go find it, projects, COA apps, first COA app. And there it's set up. And then here you can kind of see everything that's in that folder. I can create new files and new folders in that directory. Makes working a lot easier. So let's take a look at that package.json. So you can see what I mean by the dependencies. So you can see here, dependencies are listed. So that's what I mean that it's going to list that stuff in the future. Even if, you'd, if you were to just delete this node modules folder, you could just do, do npmi and just reinstall all that stuff. So cool. 
Now, on that note, I'm going to kind of wrap it up here. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll start building out our index.js file and start building out our server and then get into routes. Get the first steps of just sort of getting that server application going. So I'll see you guys later. This is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com.